Guys, I am back down here still at Gary Games. I got the whole team with me now, and I'm gonna let Justin Gary introduced to you the guys that worked on this game. Awesome, it's really awesome to all be standing here. We've got uh, John Fiorillo, uh, Richard Garfield, Brian Kibler. Uh, you know, we're the core design team behind making Soul Forge, um, and this is the first time we've been able to show it off. Um, we know you guys have been sending in questions, so we're hoping to be able to answer that and really show you some details about the game, walk through some mechanics, and, uh, and answer your questions. Absolutely. I know one of the first questions was actually for Richard. Do you feel, how do you feel your background in mathematics helps you or works into your game design? Uh, patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> mathematics is, it, uh, it's less directly applicable than one might think. Okay. Um, the, uh, just understanding how systems work is, is important and, right. uh, and, and uh, knowing uh, uh, that if you do something to the rules, the, how it'll affect the high level behavior of the game is fine. But you don't you don't really go in with uh, like calculus or oh, sure. or even <laughs> even statistics is really limited. Uh, I find that for myself that uh, it helps me on an intuitive level. But most of my design is on an an intuitive level, where uh, I have to draft it and play with it and sort of see how it feels okay. before I really understand what's going on. Awesome, awesome. Now for you other guys, you're all high level Magic players. A game, Mr. Garfield here just happens to have a small hand in, I think. <laughs> And uh, how does that, how do you guys feel that helps you or what, how does that, how do you make that change from going, I'm just winning money, I'm doing this, suddenly, you know what, I want to make some games on my own. Uh, I'm going to let Kibler start with this one since he hasn't changed, he's just going to do both. So. <laughs> I'm actually at a break from a tournament right now. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely a very different mindset for being a competitive player to being a designer. You care about okay. a lot of different things. Certainly. You know, when you're a player, you're looking for, you know, okay, well, this is the strongest card, this is the best card. You know, whereas when you're a designer, you're looking for, you know, what fun cards are. All you're, right. You're, try, you're trying to craft an environment where both the player who's trying really hard to win is able to have fun, as well as the player who's looking for different sort of experiences. Okay, awesome. How about with you guys? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, oh, go ahead, John. Yeah. I would say, I would say the same as Kibler, really. I, I agree with everything he said. Um, I think, I think it's been interesting to see that, that progression with a lot of us uh, going into the industry now. How, like, at first when we got there, we're like, oh, this card's broken, or this is the most powerful card in the set. Right. And that's not really what you're looking for as a designer, so it's been an interesting progression to see. Yeah. Cool. I mean, one of the goals here is we're, you know, we're trying to balance the aspects of, you know, being something that's compelling to us as high-level competitive players. Right. right. I mean, we know what it takes to be something that's really exciting and really awesome at the high levels, but also you need to make games that are accessible for everybody, right? Yes. And one of the things we try to do with Soul Forge is make it so that really, I mean, you know, anybody can pick up the game and start playing. The, the basic mechanic is you just pick any two cards in your hand and play them, right. and so you can just start going, but then you start seeing the layers of depth that are there. And that's something where, you know, having somebody with the experience of Richard and, you know, working on games for forever and making the game that sucked away all of our lives, <laughs> um, or like us that were actually, you know, playing it at that high level right. and like designing other games like Ascension, um, you know, trying to get that fusion, I think, gives us a unique ability to make something that can really appeal to all types of gamers. Oh, wow, okay. Uh, Richard, what drew you to work with these guys, especially what makes Soul Forge, I mean, you know, you're just like, okay, let's go. What what drew you into into that? Well, I, I've been uh, thinking a lot about uh, electronic trading card games for a long time. Okay. And and uh, it's it's only become recently that uh, that it really feels like uh, uh, technology is caught up to what could really make the optimum product. All right. Um, and uh, and so I met up with uh, Justin last year at PAX. Uh, and and was I, I I met him long before that of course because he's uh, uh, was on the pro tour and uh, and uh, and so we met there but uh, but I re met him there and right. was we, we were both <laughs> apparently looking looking at the same thing and the opportunity we were looking at the same opportunities and the, and interested in the same platforms and I was coming fresh off of just uh, a complete admiration of uh, Ascension oh absolutely which, uh, which I, I liked as a paper game but then uh, when I started uh, seeing what they'd done with the electronic game the uh, the uh, yeah. I game, yeah. it just it just uh, was mind opening. It really uh, 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 was amazing and in interface and the way it interfa intera interacted with the gameplay. So right. uh, it seemed like a good partnership. And, awesome. Uh, so that's and what I was reacting to. And right. And obviously, so far, just from the demo that I saw, it's a hell of a partnership. Yeah, it's yeah. looking really good. Yeah, I mean, for people that haven't seen it, I, you know, walk through a little bit oh, of the demo because uh, you know, basically, this is the first time anyone's ever been able to see it. We have hands-on demos for everybody here at Gen Con. Even we all didn't get to see it until a couple of days ago. So you know, it was one of those we've been things. Playing a lot of it. And we've been doing nothing but playing it. Every, when we end the show, we all sit home and play it. Uh, so. <laughs> 
So I'll show you, as I said, basically, you know, before you draw a hand of five cards every turn, you're going to play two of them. Um, you can show what the main mechanic, which is something that just wasn't possible in the physical world, sure. is that cards actually transform as you play them and level up. So you can see here, this is just a basic creature with four attack and six health. It levels up into a version with, you know, that's bigger and then has a new triggered power that works when you play level one cards and then gets even bigger as it goes. Okay. So, you, so each one levels in a different way, which makes it so that the strategy comes in, not just in thinking about what can I play right now, but what do I want to have available later and how those things play out. Nice. So it really creates something, that, again, easy. I can just pick any card I want, play it into any one of these five lanes, right. and it just does it, levels up, moves on to the next turn. But when I want to start thinking about it more, there's a lot more going on there. Okay. Um, so just the basics more, there's three different card types. There's creatures, as you see here, they go yes. in the lane, they have an attack and a health. There's structures, which will also go into a lane and give a bonus, so it's like uh, constructs in Ascension or enchantments in Magic. Nice. Just give, a, give both of our games some credit there. Right. Um, and then uh, you have your basic spells, which just give you some effect and then go away. Okay. Um, and so every turn you're going to declare attack with your creatures. Um, the creatures that just came into play um, are in defensive mode, they don't attack right away. Nice. Um, so then we would move on to the next turn. Show the next thing here. Um, so then you can see the hand of cards here. You can just, again, simply, you can see some of the cards that you want to play for later. Um, level up your cards in hand, they give you some other strategic advantages. Again, just, and no attacking for this turn. Now attacks will start on the follow-up turn. Since this guy's going to go, you can see he goes from grayed out to colored in, so you mm -hmm. know he's ready to fight. All right. Um, so then we'll just drag out. Uh, this guy actually has a cool power, lets you copy him when he comes into play. He comes into play in an adjacent lane. So we'll put him in over here. So you can see another thing that's pretty hard to do in a physical game. You know, you can use tokens or whatever, but here right. the electronic version takes care of it for you. Nice. Um, now we'll show you what an attack, lo attack looks like. So these guys are going to fight here. Um, the six power is more than enough to take out his two health. Sure. Four power does damage there, and you can see the damage actually will stay on him. So he's going to stay as one health unless he gets healed or killed later. Okay, sticky uh, damage, always good. Yep, exactly. Um, and then we'll just drop out another guy here. So now this looks like a pretty awesome dominant board position. Um, yeah. and, and that turn, and it goes back and forth. So you can see how fast it is to go back and forth. Right. Every four turns is when you reshuffle your deck, and that's when you'll start getting access to the level two cards that you see that keep oh, getting sucked into the right, deck there. All right, very cool. Um, so I know we want to show one more combat here, and uh, I'll just show an attack so you can see that the guys are always going to attack in the opposite lane. They also right. attack even on your opponent's turn. So even though it's the, uh, th this player's turn, this guy's still going to come and hit him in the face. Oh, so all right. So you can see so these guys fight and do damage. The, you started 100 health. You can see he took six here. It's going to bring down to 94. So just like in Magic, when your health total gets reduced to zero, you're, you're out. out of the game. Um, and so that's very much the basics of it. Uh, before we go, one last thing. Now, uh, you had mentioned the play tournaments. Yes. Where are we looking for a tournament structure for this game? What do you think, Brian? You think we're going to have some tournaments on this game? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But we should mention, too, it's not that it's not only competitive. There's going to be a single player mode for people that don't want that. You know, you can play yourself with those fans of, uh, you know, Ascension when you just play alone. Right. And I'm going to use the key word here, free to play. Um, when you actually play yeah. in the campaign, you can earn cards and play. So, you know, look, we've all gotten addicted and spent way too much money on, on his game, amongst others. <laughs> um, yes. and, uh, and while, of course, you can buy booster packs, you can do all that stuff here if you don't have that kind of money you can play and earn the cards that way you want to play cool. in high-end competitive tournaments you can get there you can do that we'll be playing in the kickstarter only tournament when it starts to come and uh you know get a chance to play against us and test your metal um, nice. but really we're trying to appeal to every level of player no matter where you are in the spectrum so well that is very cool and and awesome that you know to see a tournament scene for that should be really exciting in the years to come <laughs> awesome well i know you guys have got me hooked i saw the kickstarter i don't know about a week ago and i was just like i'm sorry what so, uh, obviously, very glad to be able to, to meet with you guys and talk to you about it and show it to the uh, Mozu Pro audience, obviously here at Gen Con. Um, parting words, anything else you guys would like to say? Uh, last thing I'd say is that, you know, we have a special promotion going on through Gen Con. Yes. If you donate at least $25 to Kickstarter, in addition to all the bonuses, like getting in the beta, getting exclusive promos, getting a backer-only avatar, um, you'll get an extra bonus starter deck when the game goes live. So nice. you'll have an edge on everybody else and get to play more variety of games. Right. Um, so, you know, it's something that, like, we've, you know, as a group, we've all made tons of games. We've been doing this for a long time. This is the first time we've really all been able to sort of turn to the fans to help us make this game and be a part of that process. So we really hope a lot of you will join on. We've already got, like, 2,200 people on board. Nice. Um, you know, we want you guys to be part of the next 2,200. Guys, thanks for uh, spending some time with us down here. Uh, glad we could talk to you. Guys, we'll be back. <laughs>